Hi, I'm Chris Chinchilla. I've been a little bit quiet on the video front recently because I am working on a book on Ableton Live 12, which is taking up a fair bit of time, but I'm learning a lot and going to have a lot of things related to that at some point in the future. And I have a lot of other videos planned too, but that's not what this video is about. What is one of the most common problems you can have with, well, with any DAW, but especially with Ableton? Too many damn plugins. Not only that, most plugins install multiple versions of themselves. A VST2, a VST3, an audio unit, and maybe others. And I am super obsessive about keeping my disk space and my computer running as optimally as possible. I don't really need to be, but I am. There we go, that's the way I am. So I was pleased to find a quick, easy, reliable, and generally free way to have a little bit of a tidy up. Let's get started. So it's a common problem when you install plugins in music software, they install multiple versions of themselves. So in this case, we have VST3 and audio units. I haven't completely come to a decision based on reading around which of those two is best. But in this case, Amplitube 5, it was VST2, VST3, and audio units. And we can definitely get rid of VST2. So that's what I'm going to do here. And we can also see it here as well, and in many other cases. And whilst these aren't huge, they do eat up a little bit of space. So this is the VST folder. This doesn't necessarily include, I'm not going to necessarily remove all of them, but it's two and a half gig. So even if we removed 60 to 70% of those, that's a fair saving. And if then I was going to trim out the VST3 or the AUs as well, then it would be a big saving. There is a cool tool that maybe some of you have heard of that someone told me about. It's Audio Plugin Installer from Wide Blue Sound. So it's a simple install process. Just drag it in. Here it is. It does install a helper in the background, which is slightly odd and annoying that it wants to install something that runs in the background <laughs> when that's what every other plugin does in the music world. And it would be nice to remove a lot of that. As you can see, there's two sections here. And this is why the application only runs on a Mac right now. Often macOS keeps tabs on things that have been installed a certain way with these receipts. And this actually lets us trigger the uninstall process of certain plugins. This doesn't necessarily mean it's the uninstaller will be precise enough to uninstall what we want, but it's an option. I'm going to use Amplitude as an example. And I think if we just click uninstall package, yeah, here we go. So... Yeah, this again is going to remove everything. So yeah, your mileage may vary with this option. Some installers offer you the option to install or uninstall or not install, which is not quite the same as uninstall each component, but not all. Some will just install everything. But for example, here, we may be able to do this for heat wave. Let's see. So yeah, this is more precise. So I can click on install and that will be removed. So that's kind of a tidier way to do it with macOS, but as we can see, it may not always be an option. Here's another one. Excellent. If that isn't an option, so let's go for that amplitude again, then we can take this path. You can see this is a big one, unsurprisingly. And you can filter here not just even the three I'm looking at, but also others, and delete it. Here we go. Amazing. So I'm going to go and have a bit of a clear out. I mean, you could just do like this, but I feel like I want to be a bit more careful because there may be some where I don't actually have any other version. <laughs> I want to bring it down as much as possible. So I'm going to go through this list a little bit more carefully and I'll come back to you soon and tell you how much space I saved. So in the end, I could only find two, which is a good sign. I don't have masses of plugins, to be fair. 513, I don't think that's completely correct because obviously this is still including some duplications. 
and some are kind of versions of each other. I only found two that only had VST2 support, so I left them in. And I wasn't completely sure if this component part, I think this is something macOS needs. I'm not sure if that's an AU. I'll come back to that at a later date, I think. And you can see I've selected quite a few. I would say on average 10 megabytes each. I don't know how many I've selected, but enough, or maybe more than 10. So I'm not saving gigabytes of data or processor power, and I don't need to, but I'm a little obsessive <laughs> about this kind of thing and like to have things as clean as possible. Of course, so here's one, for example. And of course, I hope this isn't going to break anything. We'll find that out soon. <laughs> Let's go for it. 85 of them. So that's actually nearly two gig. So it's not bad. There we go. All right. So let's fire up Ableton. See what happens. I don't really see anything's going to be problematic. I'm not a heavy plugin user anyway. I have this currently in lower resolution so for the video. So it's a bit squashed. You know, I don't have masses of plugins, but I'm not really seeing any errors. I'm also not seeing all the VST2s now anymore, which is good. So it's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to also try a different application. So a lot of my older music is actually in GarageBand. Again, I think I was largely using the internal plugins, but let's just see if we get any errors. I'm also not completely sure if GarageBand will default to audio unit, as you can see from the message here. I'm going to open something a little bit more complicated, maybe. This is a very old song anyway. <laughs> Seemingly not getting any errors. So I think that kind of worked. I'm kind of hoping that for the most part, whatever plugin you had selected, it picked the best version, whatever that may mean, in, especially in the subject of GarageBand. With Ableton, obviously, you can pick more individually. You should be able to just sort of swap it out, I suppose. But it seems to work great, actually. And let's uh, quickly jump in to here. So this was the folder that we mostly were removing from. So wow, that's gone from, I think it was like 2.4 to less than 400 megabytes. So <laughs> that's pretty cool, actually. Whilst we're still here, let's have a quick look at the settings. So you can set what's ignored, basically, and that's about all you need. So it works pretty well. It's $10 or sometimes free. I got it actually for free. So great little tool if you've got a lot of plugins and you want to free up a lot of space. And that's it. Space saved, things running smoother, all completely noticeable, of course, but it makes me feel better. And that's really the most important thing. I have been Chris Chinchilla. You can find more about Audio Plugin Installer on the link above. And you can find more about me at chrischinchilla.com. If you like what you saw, please leave a comment, please share, please subscribe. Every little helps. Thank you very much for joining me and take care, everybody. Keep making music. Mm -hmm.